What is an input in Jenkins? You may or may not have used the input step in your Jenkins pipelines in the past. We're going to look at a few different ways that it can be used, and we're going to look at a way that it should never be used. Here's our starting point for today. We have a Jenkins LTS controller. It's version 2.303.1. We have an agent attached to it, and this agent is a Linux-based agent. We're also going to be using a sample repository in this video. So down in the description, you'll find a link to that repository. Let's go over and take a look at that repository. Very simple repository. We have five different Jenkins files that we're going to be walking through today. Let's take a look at the first one, Jenkins file dash one. A very standard, very normal looking Jenkins file. I've got a pipeline, agent any. I have, have a stage with a step that has actually two steps in it. I have an input, and then I'm using the sh step to just echo out host name and cat Etsy Red Hat release. So this is a CentOS based agent. Your agent may be different. So if you're wanting to go through these examples, you might need to change the commands that are being called. So let's go over and create our pipeline. So new item, I'm going to call this input job. Pipeline, click OK. Let's go down and take a look at pipeline script to SCM. Change the SCM to git. There's our URL. Our branch is main. And Jenkins file dash one. Let's click on save. All right, let's go ahead and click on build now and let's see what happens. Click on one here. Does the clone, we get a hello world. So we have a choice. We have either submit or abort. If we take a look at our pipeline, our okay, we change to submit. So let's go ahead and click on submit. And as the job finishes, we see our host name, which is agent one, and that's the host name of the agent. And you can also see that it's rendering out CentOS Linux 7.9. So everything looks pretty good here. Or is it? There's actually a problem with this pipeline. Let's go back up to our job and let's run it one more time. We click on build now. And we can see that two is started up. And if we take a look at two, we can see that it's waiting on Hello World, right? It's waiting for us to click on the submit button. It's really not a button, it's a link, but think of it as a button. Let's go back to the top of our controller. If we take a look down here, we can see that input job has taken over the executor that is on our agent. So if we were to start another job that did not need an input, and it could just use this executor. But right now we have completely stolen this executor from the agent and we can do no more work on this controller because right now this controller only has the single executor on this one agent. So how do we get around this? Let's go ahead and stop this job. And let's go take a look at Jenkins file two. So if we take a look at Jenkins file two, We've actually broken this up a little bit, and now we have two stages. We have a stage that's just the input, and we have a stage that is going to echo out our hostname and Red Hat release. But notice how the agent has changed. Our global agent is now none, and we've moved our agent any down into this all done stage where the echoing of the host name and Red Hat release is happening. Let's go update our job and take a look at this. So if we modify this job, click on configure, change our Jenkins file dash one to Jenkins file dash two. Click on save, click on build now. Now if we go take a look at build three, we can see that it's like, oh, hey, here we are. Let's not click it yet. Let's go back over to our controller. Right now we can see that the agent executor is setting idle. The reason why that is, is the input is just sitting there listening for the answer. I don't need an agent executor to wait for this input. So I'm on agent none, but the input is able to run and it's just waiting for that answer. Let's go give it an answer. 
In fact, let's give it an answer in the affirmative. Otherwise, it will just stop right there. Click on Submit. It was approved by admin. I'm logged in as admin. And now we can see the output for hostname and Red Hat release. So by having agent none here and having the input outside of an agent context, we are not blocking any processes on our agents from running because we haven't stolen all of the agent executors. It's just waiting there nicely for an answer to occur on the controller. So this is the big deal. Do not put input steps inside of an agent. Right now we have agent none. So our input is waiting on agent none. And then once we've said yes, go ahead, then it goes down to the next stage, it grabs an agent and then does the work. Now, another way that you can use the input step is you can add parameters to be passed on down through the rest of the pipeline. Let's take a look at our Jenkins file three. Now these parameters are different than the parameters that you would use on the pipeline. This is a parameter within the input step. Now you'll see here, I have defined a first name variable. It's outside of the pipeline block itself. We can see here within steps, I've opened up a script block and I'm doing input. And now my message is just saying, hello world. I'm now saying, what is your first name? And then I'm defining the parameters. And in this case, I have a single parameter. Now, by default, if there's only one parameter, that parameter value is returned back from input into a variable. If you had multiple values here, then what would happen is this would now be a map. But since we only have a single, I only need a single variable here. Again, going back to what we talked about in the Jenkins file two example, we have agent none. So that means this input is not running on an agent. So we're not stealing any agent executors. And then we get down into our output stage and we say agent any. And then our steps, we're saying echo good morning, first name. And then we're echoing out our host name and Red Hat release, just like we did before. So let's go back and run this job. Configure, change this to three. Oops, where is it? There it is. Click Save, and let's click on Build Now. When we take a look at this run. We have input requested. Let's click on that. It takes us to, what is your first name? The default's Dave. I'm gonna leave Dave in there and click on Submit. And as it continues on, we can see that it says, good morning, Dave. And then it echoes out agent one and CentOS, just as we expected from this value. Now, although this worked, it's pretty ugly. So we have a way that we can clean this up, make it a little more readable. It may be a little different, but it's going to be more readable and more maintainable. So let's go take a look at Jenkins file four. So let's go up here, click on Jenkins file four. We've gotten rid of our first name variable that was outside of the pipeline block. We still have agent none. Now we have a single stage. We're back to a single stage. Now you might be saying, no, wait a minute, Darren. I thought I needed an agent, but a single stage wouldn't give me that. Look at how this is constructed. Instead of now having our input inside of the steps block, we now have an input directive, just like there is a steps directive and just like there is an agent any directive. So this looks very similar to our Jenkins file three. It's just that it's reconstructed to be a directive. So I'm saying input, what's your first name? Okay, is submit. Here's our parameter for first name. And then once this is entered, what we're going to see is basically the exact same thing that we just saw on the previous run. Let's go set this up. So let's click on that. Let's go to four. So we'll scroll down, change three to four. And now let's click on build now. So we're on five. It's saying input requested. Now, before we go on, remember we have an agent none and it's waiting for the input. Just to verify that, 
we can see down here at our executor, it's setting idle. So everything's still looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and click on input job. Let's go back over to five, click on input requested. Sure, Dave, scroll down. And again, we get the same answer. Good morning, Dave, our host name and Red Hat release. So this is a cleaned up version of what we just saw in dash three. We didn't need to define any variables outside of the pipeline block. We didn't need to add in any script blocks within our steps. So this is a much cleaner implementation of the previous pipeline. Now, what if you don't even want to run this input step unless you're on a specific branch? That's possible. So let's go back over and take a look at five. Now, right now you can see that we're on the main branch. If we take a look at five, this is exactly the same as dash four, except we've added in this win directive. And what this is saying is before we even evaluate the input, I'm going to check and see if I'm on the branch of production. Now remember, we're actually on the main branch, not a production branch. Production branch doesn't even exist in this repository. But in this example that I'm laying out, in this case, the only time I even want to do the input and therefore the steps is if I'm on the branch named production. So let's go modify the job one last time and change it to dash five. Click save. Let's do a build now. And this will be the most boring output that you've seen so far in this video. We can see that the stage input was skipped due to the win conditional. What is our win conditional? We're not on the branch called production. We're on a branch called main. So therefore the input is never rendered. Therefore the steps are skipped. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.